Hey everyone, a video in case you're running into some electrical uh, error codes or if you're getting the uh, cruise control flashing on your dashboard on your Subaru. This is a 2019 Forester. This problem can actually occur on different models. Uh, we had a bit of a situation with that vehicle where the battery drained completely uh, because of the trunk light that stayed on completely depleted the battery and that created a whole bunch of issues um, this is my girlfriend's car she tried to get it boosted by uh, CAA didn't work I had to get it boosted by a friend actually I guess the um, battery pack at CAA was a little weak but the battery was dead dead there was no lights on the dash nothing got it boosted managed to start her up but from that point on she had a bunch of issues with the cruise control flashing the uh, intelligent driving mode uh, not working and a bunch of other things and it would actually report on the dashboard that there is a there's a problem you can also actually read the codes uh, using a an ODB computer and you, you will actually get some um, uh, some codes on there as well I will document this in a moment 2019 Subaru this is the base trim but I will show you what the problem was so that in case you run into this you can troubleshoot yourself save yourself some time and hopefully a little bit of money in the process. Let's take a look at this. So this is a description of what the problem looks like when you run into this. I'm just going to turn the ignition on, start the car. And that's what you get. So the um, cruise control is flashing, the um, S mode is flashing so there are some um, some uh, these are the main the main problems right so you cannot switch from intelligent to uh, to other modes um, when you drive the vehicle and that's the this these are the symptoms that you might run into now we're gonna read the codes and see what that looks like from a computer standpoint so to read the codes you will need one of these little ODB readers I happen to have one here it's an Alufix 5600 it's a good device, although I use this primarily with my Volkswagens. For uh, Japanese cars, there are other versions. This one actually can read the codes and can also reset, but there's only just a certain subset of things that you can do. And you might actually need a specific one for your uh, Japanese vehicle. So just be mindful of that. I will plug this device to the ODB connector, which is underneath there. So the ODB connector is... can see there. Okay, so I'm just going to plug it in and see what codes are being read. Alright, my uh, reader is now connected and we're going to look at some of the um, of what codes are actually showing. So we're going to go on the first icon here and it's reading the system. You know, I need to turn the ignition on because uh, right now it's not, it's not reading them. So let me go back here. Oh, it's still reading. Okay, we'll let it finish. Alright. Now, we're going to read the codes. See what happens. And in this particular case, we only have two codes. Generic, which is a system voltage. One of three. Two of three system voltage. 3 of 3 system voltage, this is the error code P0560, you might run into the same one on your car and I'll show you how I was able to um, troubleshoot that. Note that you cannot actually reset this code using this uh, particular terminal and I tried with a different terminal as well that was designed for Japanese cars and it didn't make a difference. So it's not a code that's actually stored in the ECU per se, it's a code that's being read every time you turn the car on. And obviously, until you resolve the problem, you will sit, still see the same symptoms on your uh, dashboard with the uh, cruise control flashing and um, the, the driving mode flashing as well. So let's look at the troubleshooting steps so that we can get this um, identified and see where the problem lies. This is the view from the driver's seat. You'll see that there is one fuse box right in this compartment that you can open with a little door. That door actually can be unclipped on the Forester and it will give you um, a diagram again of all the different fuses. 
Uh, and all the fuses are documented online. If I actually show you what this looks like here, you'll see that the fuse box is in there. Now, let's look at how you actually troubleshoot this. Um, I sort of knew that this was a problem with the electrical system because of the battery going completely down. There was just too much of a coincidence for this not to be related uh, to the, the, the problem that she was having. So let's look into this a little bit more closely. So when I realized that the error code had to do with voltage, I figured that there was something related to the fact that the battery got depleted uh, very shortly before that. If you look at the fuse box here, there's a whole bunch of fuses. As I mentioned, if you look at the back of the door, you will find a diagram with a description of different fuses. Uh, it is a high level description, it's not necessarily super easy to decipher. You might want to actually look up the, um, the manual of your vehicle online uh, and find out what each of your fuses actually do. Now, there's one thing that you have to see on these little fuses is that they have two little bright spots on the side. So if I point at this one here, you'll see there's a bright spot here and there's a bright spot there. These are your terminals. So if you wanted to test each and every fuse, which might be a good idea, um, then you will just put your uh, multimeter on both of the terminals and you'll be able to determine whether the fuse is good or not. So let's take a look at this troubleshooting step. It's really easy. You just need a voltmeter in order to, to uh, an ohm meter really in order to do that. And it's, uh, it's pretty quick. Let's take a look at this. All right, so I got my uh, ohm meter in a ohm position. And if you look at the two wires, if you touch them, you see that it's reading obviously the internal resistance of my uh, ohm meter. And what we'll do here is check every single one of those. I won't obviously make a video for every single one of them, but the process is very straightforward. You will just bring, doesn't really matter which one you use, you, I'm gonna pick this one right here, which is a 10 amp. And I wanna make sure that this one is actually good. So I'm gonna put one wire on each of the little bright spots that I was telling you earlier. And you see how the ohmmeter is reacting, which means that this fuse is actually good. And you're gonna do this actually on each and every one of them. And if you actually run into one that's actually not good, your ohmmeter display will display just that. It will actually show as if the circuit was open, which is normal because the fuse obviously is blown, and uh, that will point you in the right direction. It's much easier to do it this way than to have to remove each and every one of these fuses. In the fuse box under the um, under the, the hood, in the engine compartment, there is this little tool that you can use in order to remove uh, each and every one of the fuses if you wanted to. It's a very time consuming process. It's not really easy to um, um, actually work in this area. It's pretty tight. Uh, but if you do find a fuse that's no good, you can use a pair of um, uh, gooseneck pliers or you can actually uh, or um, uh, needle nose plier more so, or you can use that little tool in order to remove the fuse that, that is problematic and replace it, obviously, with an identical value fuse. So in this case, the problem wasn't coming from here. I tested every single one of them, they were all good. So I did a little bit of research and as I um, mentioned earlier, there is a second fuse box under the hood. So let's take a look at that one now. There are two fuse boxes on the Subaru Forester. This is the one that's under the engine hood. Uh, it's in the engine compartment. It's to your left uh, if you're sitting in the driver's seat. And you'll find the cover here and your battery terminals here, right? In order to access the, um, the battery, um, sorry, the fuse box, you will need to remove the latch that's on the right here and then press on the latch that's on the left on this side and just lift it up. One thing that you need to know is that there is actually a diagram of all the different fuses in the uh, in the box that's on the back of the lid. And you will also find some spare fuses, which in this case uh, happen to be really handy because I didn't have any otherwise. And you'll see that the one that was the culprit is actually gone. That was the 7.5 amps. So we'll look into the uh, fuse box and see what the problem was and how you can troubleshoot the problem. All right, we're in the engine compartment now. Again, the second fuse box. As you can tell, there's a whole bunch of fuses here along with a bunch of relays. Uh, we're gonna, again, check each and every one of these fuses. 
I won't waste too much of your time, so I'm gonna go straight to uh, the test that I did. And I just literally reproduced the problem by reinserting the bad fuse in there, which allowed me to show you the symptoms on your car computer. And in this case, uh, we're gonna do the exact same test, right? I'm gonna try to do it in such a way that I'm not blocking the, the signal or blocking the video. You can see this one is good, it's reacting correctly. And I'm gonna go straight, almost straight to the one that's problematic so you're gonna touch both sides of the fuse so I'll do it again yeah and this one is wrong okay so this one doesn't read anything this one is good this one is is bad so in my case that was the one actually that was problematic and um, if you look at the back of the cover then Looking at the front of the car, right? Uh, so this is a diagram that you will be looking at. You have to make sure that you give it the proper orientation. And that was a 7.5, which is this one, which is labeled as PU backup, which is probably power unit backup. I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. But this one was the one that was problem that was problematic in my case. To remove it, use the little white tool that I showed you earlier. You don't have to, right? You can use these um, nail nose pliers, as I was mentioning earlier. I'm gonna pull that out. Okay, so this one is bad, and I'll show you what um, what a bad one actually looks like. It is blown, right? If you look at it, they're semi-transparent, so if you look through them, you'll see that there is um, the metallic part is actually blown. And you're gonna go um, and use the new one uh, that was actually on the inside of the lid again. So it was actually placed in that little corner. This was a 7.5, it's upside down, but it was actually right here. And reinsert that one where the old one was, right? Uh, it's very straightforward again. These fuses are very inexpensive. And if you don't have any, you can get them from uh, Canadian Tire, right? So push it in and this is it. That's basically how you fix or how I was able to fix that problem. And if you test that one, I'll try not to block the video again. This one is reading correctly, right? So that's obviously a brand new fuse. I'll need to get new ones now because I used the used up the 7.5 that was in there. But from that point on, you can basically put this back on, make sure it's uh, the, the latches line up, secure it in place, and the problem should go away. So let's take a look at the computer now. So we're back inside the vehicle. I'm gonna turn on the engine, see what happens. There you go, air code is gone. Uh, the display is uh, working properly. We have the cruise control that's back on. We're in intelligent mode. So everything is back to normal. Uh, actually, in my case, I double checked with reading the computer and yeah, the error code actually was no longer there. Great. So this is how I solved this electrical problem on this 2019 Forester. I hope this was helpful. Try it out. If you do have the tools, then definitely worth taking a look at it. If you don't have the tools, they're not that expensive really to get. If you have a friend who's a little bit more uh, technical, might be able to lend you this tool so that you can troubleshoot the problem on your own. It could be as simple as a 50 cent fuse that's blown in your fuse box. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And um, yeah, good luck with uh, addressing that uh, pesky little problem. I know that driving on Canadian roads without the cruise control is definitely painful. So good luck and don't forget, like and subscribe. Thanks everyone.